is your name, please? My name is Marlene Bauer Hagee. What is your name, please? My name is Marlene Bauer Hagee. What is your name, please? My name is Marlene Bauer Hagee. Two of these people are imposters. Only one of them is the real Marlene Bauer Hagee and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Brought to you each week by Geritol, America's number one tonic, the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. And now may I introduce our panel to you. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is Don Amici. My name is Joan Bennett. And my name is High Gardner. Joan, may I take this moment to welcome you officially and tell you how glad we are to have you on our panel tonight? Thank you very much. And hi, as for you, welcome back from Europe, lad. Well, thank you, lad. Good to have you back. <laughs> now, as for these three young ladies, they all claim to be Marlene Bauer Hagee. Of course, only one is the real Marlene Hagee. The others have merely assumed that identity, and they're the ones that do not have to stick to the truth. Panel, in front of you, you will find, I trust, copies of an affidavit. Would you please follow along while I read it? I, Marlene Bauer Hagee, am a professional golfer. I have been playing tournament golf for more than 10 years. I hold the all-time women's record for money won in a single year. In 1956, I won eight major golfing titles, including the World's Championship and the Ladies' PGA Championship. When I was 15 years old, I was elected the Woman Athlete of the Year. Signed, Marlene Bauer Hagee. Panel, as you heard, these three ladies all claim to be Marlene Bauer Hagee, professional golfer. Only the real Marlene Hagee is required to answer your questions truthfully. And as usual, you will question until you hear this signal. At the end of the questioning period, you will be asked to register your vote for the one who, in your opinion, is the real Marlene Hagee. And let's start the questioning tonight with Don Amici. Don? I'd like to start, Bud, but uh, I'm sure that uh, Marlene Bauer Hagee uh, doesn't remember, but I have met her at... Oh, Some, uh, do you want to time. disqualify yourself, I must you? disqualify Oh, myself. too bad. Sorry. All right, Don, graciously put. <laughs> now we'll start with... Uh, <laughs> I can try. We'll start with uh, Joan Bennett. Joan? Uh, number one, it says here that you won the ladies' PGA championship. What does that mean? Well, it's the championship for the ladies of the LPGA organization. So you tried to get rid of abbreviations and you got more. <laughs> I'll leave that alone. Uh, number two, what kind of equipment do you use? Well, officially, to play in a tournament, you can only have 14 clubs. And it's in preference, really. You can either take five woods or four woods. I, myself, take four woods and uh, nine irons and a putter. Number three, it says you hold the all-time woman's record for money won in a single year. How much was that? About 20850 but I'm afraid you're going to have to check with the Internal Revenue Boys. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, you're, you're such a little girl. Uh, how much does your bag weigh, your golf bag? I don't know the exact weight. I don't carry it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Number two, have you played on any golf courses in Los Angeles? I have, yes. Hi, Gardner. I think I'll have to disqualify myself. I once met uh, Don Amici. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, what is your caddy weight? <laughs> it varies. It varies. Uh, number three, who was a girl named Withy? An English girl, Margaret Smith. Uh huh. Number two, approximately, what are the odds against making a hole in one? Oh, they're great, believe me. <laughs> They're terrific. There's one fellow, a uh, Wells, who he has about 34. I've never had one. I've come about mm -hmm. that close, but never. Number one, would you know what the percentage is, approximately? No, I, I number wouldn't. Number three? I wouldn't have the vaguest idea, sir. Uh-huh. Uh, number three, where is the famous golf course called Tamashanter? Chicago, Niles, Illinois, about 14 miles northwest. Uh-huh. Number 
Polly? Uh, <clears throat> number two, what is the first title you won? Well, the first title I won was kind of funny, really. It was a boys' junior championship out in Carmel <laughs> Valley. I was the only girl. I was 10 when I played that. Well, at I that won. age, it didn't really make too much difference. No, not really don't. Uh, <laughs> number three, <clears throat> is there such a thing as a seven and a half iron? No, ma'am. Number... There. If there is, I haven't heard about it. <laughs> number two, is there such a thing no, as a seven and a half iron? Number three, um, you have a sister who is a professional golfer, don't you? Yes, Miss Bergen, I do. Alice Bowden. I see. Is she, uh, is she still playing professionally? Yes, indeed she is. Uh, what is her name, number two? Alice. Alice. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, there is a female golfer, uh, professional golfer, very young girl, who was married to a young movie actor. What is her name? She offhand. I number one, could you tell me the name? No, I don't believe so. That's it. It's time now to vote, panel, without consultation, even with Don Amici. Just mark your ballots, if you will, and select thereby number one, number two, or number three. Remember, the team of challengers will get $250 for every incorrect vote. With that in mind, Polly, have you marked your ballot? Yes, I have, oh. but I voted for number one because uh, I know that there are some professional golfers who use uh, irons in the halves, seven and a half, eight and a half. But you never asked number one. Well, number two and number three both said no, there weren't. So you so just assumed that number one was... <laughs> yes, I didn't want to waste my time asking her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Don, we'll have to skip over you, but that brings us to Joan. Joan Bennett? I voted for number two. She seemed to have a slight recognition in her eye for Don Amici, but I wish she would anyway. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I was so in answering the question. You were looking for that glint, I think, John. <laughs> Hi, Gardner, your vote, please. Well, I remained orderly. I voted number three. <laughs> Number three, uh, New Whiffy Smith, Thomas Shanter, and always, I've been playing golf, not trying to, for a great many years, and they always say, keep your head up, and her head hasn't been down since she sat down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you have it. Our rhymes and our reasons. We've told you how we have voted, and let's see how it compares with your voting at home. As we find out right now, which one of these very attractive ladies is the real professional golfer? So will the real Marlene bauer Hagee please... Stand up. Ah! <laughs> Thank you very much, Marlene. Now, number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? Yes, my name is Suzanne Tiley, and I'm a stewardess for National Airlines. Airline and <laughs> Number three, what about you? My name is Pamela Stewart. I'm a tennis pro at George W. Harry's Boulevard Gardens Tennis Course in Woodside. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you can see by checking, there were two incorrect votes, actually, and we count uh, Don's disqualification as another one. That means three incorrect votes at $250 each for a total, ladies, of $750 from Jared Hall. Thanks very much. Hope you had fun. We enjoyed having you here. Good night and good luck. Now may we have our next team of challengers, please. What is your name, please? My name is Ted Geisel. What is your name, please? My name is Ted Geisel. What is your name, please? My name is Ted Geisel. All right, panel, once again, will you take a look at the copy of the affidavit in front of you now? I, Ted Geisel, am perhaps better known to the juvenile reading public as Dr. Seuss. I am the creator and illustrator of one of the most famous advertising campaigns of all time, Quick Henry the Flit. More recently, I created Gerald McBoing Boing, who became the hero of the 1950 Academy Award winning cartoon. I am known primarily, however, as the author and illustrator of 15 children's books which feature weird and wonderful animals. My current bestseller, The Cat in the Hat, has sold so far almost a quarter of a million copies. Signed, Ted Geisel. And 
Now, panel, we have three gentlemen, each one claiming to be Ted Geisel or Dr. Seuss. So we'll start this cross-examination with High Gardner. Hi. Well, I'm glad to meet three doctors who specialize in a miracle drug called laughter. I think it's the most important drug we have. Number one, I've got a friend named Don Harold. What does he do? Don Harold? I don't know him. Do you know him, number two? Don Harold is a cartoonist, advertising man. Uh-huh. Number three, do you know him? I know uh, Don Harold is a cartoonist. He used to do cartoons for the New Yorker. No, he does uh -huh. advertising. Uh, number two, what two comic uh, strip artists uh, had a terrific personal feud going until one of them died? I don't reckon. That is, uh, comic strips are not exactly my field. I'm more or less in books, and I don't remember this. Uh -huh. sure. Number three, would you know? No, I wouldn't know. Number one? No. Uh, number two, what cartoonist won a Pulitzer Prize? Uh, Roland Kirby. Polly? Uh, number one, name the, name the woman who wrote the uh, uh, Academy Award winning Gerald McBoing Boing cartoon. Mm, Hammer. Barbara Hammer. Uh, number two, um, it, it says that your, your um, what you call that, your writing name is Dr. Seuss. What, why did you pick that particular name? Any particular it's reason? It's a complete phony. That's my middle name, and I put the doctor in front of it. Oh, Seuss is your middle name. I see. Uh, number three, do you write, uh, you illustrate and write, I know, do you write uh, uh, in verse or just straight story form? Uh, practically always in verse. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, your cartoons, are, are, your illustrations are famous for very wild uh, animals. Uh, which is the, the, your favorite of all the animals you've ever oh, done? Oh, Yertle the Turtle. <laughs> Yertle the Turtle? <laughs> number, uh, number two, who publishes your books? A random house. Uh, number uh, uh, two, how much are you paid for each book? You're not paid. You uh, take a chance and get royalties. On, you take on a chance and get royalties. What, what is your royalty on each book? It uh, differs in each book. You go from 10 to 12 and a half to 15 percent. Uh, number three, how many, how many books uh, go out in one printing? Uh, about 100,000. 100,000. Uh, number two, how long before your book will go into public domain? The two terms of 14 years. Two terms of 14. Uh, number three, how much is an advertising agency paid? I don't know. Number two? How much is an advertising agency paid for paid. what? Hmm? How much are they paid? What is the basis for their pay? Uh, for artists? <laughs> no. I'm sorry. We'll have to move along. Joan Bennett. I didn't understand. Uh, number one, when you did the flip campaign, who was your advertising agency? McCann Erickson. Uh, Number two, who is the president of Random House? Bennett Sir. Uh, number three, how many page, uh, pages are there in The Cat and the Hat? Twenty-two. It says here you draw weird animals. Describe a weird animal, number three. A weird animal may have more than the usual number of legs, <laughs> or it may have the head of a bird and the body of a mammal. Number one, name... Another one besides Yertle the Turtle. Oh, um, flannel mouth yet. <laughs> <laughs> Good a time as any to stop with the flannel mouth, I think, and it's time to vote once more. So again, without consultation panel, will you please mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three. All set early tonight, huh, Polly? For well, whom did you vote? It's one of those things where I had a hunch from the beginning, and I must say that after the questioning, I leaned toward number two, but my hunch was number one. Uh, there's something about his smile that's very similar to a cat drawing that he did. <laughs> cat with the body of a bird, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> Don Amici, your vote, please. I voted for number three, in my opinion, and I felt that he gave more correct answers to the few technical questions that were asked. Okay, Joan, your vote. I voted for number one. Seems she saw the same cat. <laughs> <laughs> saw the same cat, did you? <laughs> All right, hi, Gardner, your selection. Well, I voted for number two because he doesn't look like a cartoonist in the first place. In the second place, he knew Don Harold, and Don Harold did do illustrations primarily for advertising, and, and uh, I sort of think it's number two. Okay, there we have it now. As we've made our minds up, we'll find out whether we're right or wrong right now as we discover which one of these gentlemen is the real 
Dr. Seuss. So will the real Ted Geisel please stand up. Thank you, sir, very much. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do? I'm Burton Brown. I'm the president of the Gaslight Club. <laughs> That's a gentleman's club in, uh, with branches in New York and uh, Chicago and presently in Washington. And number three, would you tell us who you are? My name is Tom Jukes. I am a research chemist for American Cyanamid Company. Yes, you have a quick question, hi? Yes, I'd like to ask number one. You run the gas squad club. Do you see any of the animals he draws? Don't <laughs> <laughs> answer that question. <laughs> In checking up quickly, we see that there were three incorrect votes at $250 each, again for a total of $750 oh. from Cheritol, gentlemen. Profitable evening and a profitable <laughs> one for us having met you. Good night and good luck. <laughs> A new team of challengers in just a moment. Now may we meet our third team of challengers, please. What is your name, please? My name is B.C. Putnam. What is your name, please? My name is B.C. Putnam. What is your name, please? My name is B.C. Putnam. Again, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit as I read from the original? I, B.C. Putnam, have been a letter carrier for 27 years. In addition to the thousands of miles I have covered on my route, I have walked more than 50,000 miles in pursuit of my hobby, hiking. In the course of my travels, I have been bitten by snakes, attacked by wild pigs, fallen off cliffs, and worn out more than 100 pairs of boots and shoes. I once discovered a breed of midget horses only three feet tall. I am the only man in history to have walked through the entire length of the Grand Canyon. Signed, B.C. Putnam. Now, panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be, as you heard, B.C. Putnam, hiking mailman. Let's begin this round with Joan Bennett. Joan? And uh, number one, what weekly magazine gave a spread to the midget horses? I don't know. Number two? Life. Uh, number three, how many miles are covered in walking through the Grand Canyon? On my trip, I covered 149 miles. Uh, can you repeat the post office slogan? It starts out, number three, I'm sorry, I, I don't know. Uh, neither rain nor hail nor sleet shall deter the letter carrier his regular performance of his duty. Number two, uh, you wear on your mailman's uniform an insignia. Can you tell me what that is? It's the Pony Express. Hi, Gardner. Little ponies. <laughs> three feet ponies. Where did you see the three feet ponies, uh, number two? In the western part of the canyon. Where are they now? Well, some of them still in there. You can, you're not allowed to take them out. I think they're the type that Joey Lewis would bet on. Uh, <laughs> number one, uh, what post office do you work out of? Texarkana, Texas. Texarkana, Texas. What two states is that between? Arkansas and Texas. Uh, how close, sir, is that to the Mexican border? About. 1,000 miles. About 1,000 miles. Number three, uh, what, uh, uh, in, in what post office, uh, or what do you call the post office jargon for the word nix? What does that mean? That means letters that are under de deliverable by the letter carrier. Undeliverable. What illustration number two is on a <laughs> special delivery stamp? What is it says, special delivery. Polly Bergen. Um... Number one, uh, your name is B.C. Putnam. What does the B.C. stand for? Uh, B. stands for Brooke, and C. stands for Charles. Brooke My Charles. friends say they stand for bunions and calluses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number three, uh, 
it says that, that you have been attacked by wild pigs. Where did you see these wild pigs? They were down in the Superstition Mountains in out of Phoenix. I see. Uh, uh, have you ever been attacked by any wild dogs or regular dogs? I know you've been bitten by snakes and pigs oh, and everything. I've been bitten by dogs, if I remember. By dogs, too. Uh, number two, uh, did they discover where these three feet horses came from? How they were developed? Uh, well, it was probably a uh, horse had been brought over a hundred years ago from Spain, and they were down in this canyon and through inbreeding, they did, and the vegetation they had to eat is very sparse there, so they just uh, got smaller all the time. All they needed all the time was a little geritol. Don, <laughs> number uh, number one, did the army ever fly the mail? Yes, sir. For, uh, number two, for how long? Uh, just a few weeks. Uh, number uh, one, can a mailman today defend himself against a dog? Yes, sir. In what way, number two? With a weapon or such as number a cane. Number two, in what way? Uh, well, they can, they can uh, uh, put it up to the people that they won't even deliver the mail to them. Uh, number three, what's, uh, what's the quickest remedy for a snake bite? Snake bite is to put a turnkey on and keep the blood from getting into the Number two. That's it. That's it, panel. Neither snow nor rain nor heat nor gloom of night stays these couriers in the swift completion of their appointed rounds, and it's time once again to vote. So without consultation, will you please cast your ballots for number one, number two, or number three? Okay, Polly, all set? For whom did you vote? I voted for number two because when they were walking on the steps, he looked more like his feet hurt. <laughs> was your selection this time? I'm voting for number one. I'm using intuition that I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> and Joan, your selection? I voted for number two because I thought he was so quick with the correct answers. Uh, and who do you think is the real one, Hi? Well, I thought it was number two, but I voted for number three on, for sentimental reasons. He looks like Phil Silvers without a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <how> he does. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You heard our reasons. How did yours work out? Let's see. As we find out now which one of these gentlemen is the real hiking mailman. So will the real V.C. Putnam please stand up? <laughs> Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? My name is Shelby Williams. I'm a private detective and a partner of the Schindler Bureau of Investigation. <laughs> and number two, what about you, sir? My name is Dr. J. Y. Henderson. I'm the veteran for the Ringman Brothers, born in Beta Circle. <laughs> I expect you've uh, treated some real fancy animals there. Well, gentlemen, we've had really a $750 night tonight because, once again, there were three incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $750 from Geritol. Good night, sirs, and good luck to you. Well, I guess uh, we've come to the end of another perfect evening, panel. Hope everybody had fun. It was nice having you back high. And again, a welcome to you, Joan. Hope you had fun on the show tonight. A bit of a reminder, which I think you don't really need by now, all of you, and that is to watch the Polly Bergen show on Saturday night. <laughs> well worth watching. I guess that's about it, panel, so good night to you all. Good night, good night, good night Bud. And this is Bud Collier saying good night from Geritol and reminding all of you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> To tell the truth is Mark Goodson, Bill Codman production. In association with the CBS Television Network. Sound worn by the Lady Golfers came from Dorothy, 58th Street, New York City.